Hey everybody, I'm Dane Sanders, and I want to welcome you to Fast Track Coaching. This is our 126th episode, and really glad you're with us. Um, sorry for the false start a few moments ago, but it looks like we've gotten everything uh, sorted now. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the show or haven't been here before, it's a brief conversation, about a half hour, where we try to uh, invite you to listen in on a conversation and join in a conversation with me and my special guests to help you move your business forward just a little bit. The point isn't to solve all of your problems in 30 minutes. The point is for you to get a nugget or two to help move your creativity and your business forward this week, like right now, like take action. Which is why folks who tend to uh, spectate on these events, uh, they get some value out of it for sure. But the folks who get the most value out of it, without a question, are the ones who engage it on a personal level where they run the content that we're describing uh, through their own business and then ask very direct questions through the vocal interface uh, in ways that are relevant to what they want to uh, talk about. So if that's you, I welcome you to join uh, in the conversation. The way you ask questions, you, you just click the ask the question button and you can uh, go ahead and type it in or if you even you want to plug in your camera, you can join in by a video and, and uh, you can join me and my guest. Now today's guest uh, is, we're very fortunate to have her on. Her name is Ann Handley and she runs a website called uh, Marketing Profs. She's also the co-author of Content Rules with Cece Chapman, who is a recent guest of ours, and, and many of you guys spoke uh, really highly of him. And despite that, um, I was going to make a joke about Cece's <laughs> expense, but we don't need to. But really, I just, wa I just want to uh, invite Ann on the show now. Ann, thanks for being with us today. Hey, Dane. Thanks for having me. Um, now, Ann, there, we don't have much time, and I want you are so busy, uh, and I want to honor your time, so I want to jump right into it. For those who are unfamiliar with marketing props, because a lot of the folks that are, are uh, watching are pretty, um, I don't know, they have blinders on around our industry in particular within the vertical of photography mm -hmm. and small business. And uh, right. but yet there's a lot of folks, because of our guests in the past, uh, they, they obviously care a lot about marketing and branding and lead generation and all these sorts of things, social media. Um, get us up to speed a little bit on what you do uh, for small business and and uh, then we'll pick up the conversation from there sure right so um, so marketing profs is basically a resource for small businesses and we, we teach them how to do marketing sort of you know better faster and uh, more efficiently I think than um, you know that then basically we're so we're a resource to help people market better um we've got about three hundred and sixty thousand subscribers sixty thousand members and uh we what that means is that they subscribe to our newsletter they're also uh, part of our virtual events we have these day-long uh free virtual programs uh they're focused on particular content areas like email social media whatever um, we also have a blog, sort of a community that, that folks can hang out and share information. Um, again, very focused around the how-to, the know-how. You know, you're not going to find a lot of strategy. We don't have a lot of CMOs. We have a lot of small businesses, um, independent mm -hmm. consultants, and people who really need to learn about marketing very efficiently. That's great. I mean, I, I love that on so many levels. And I think the idea that... Uh, right. Um, where it meets a lot of our viewers exactly where they're at with this sense of, okay, once, e even though that strategy work is critical, uh, at the end of the day, what's going to mm -hmm. put, what's yeah. going to get viewers in front of me, what's going to get leads generated, how I'm going to get moving. And I'm curious, um, what is the most common lament you hear from a small business owner when it comes to marketing? It, it, there's got to be this just kind of consistent, you, you've heard it all. You have, I mean, you got to have like almost six figures, if not more uh, followers on Twitter. You have hundreds of thousands of people who tune into all these events on a regular basis. There's got to be a common type and lament uh, among small business owners. What do you hear most often when folks are trying to address the marketing needs? Yeah. Uh, two things. First is um, I don't have time to do everything that I'm supposed to be doing, right? Uh, it's like, you know, they're, they're not about all about marketing, right? I mean, some of the larger companies on our list do have a dedicated marketing person. Mm -hmm. But I think especially when it comes to small businesses, it's like, you know, they sort of have the equivalent of uh, marketing ADD, right? Like, where do I go? What do I do? You know, there's so much out there um, and they don't have time to do it. And then um, secondly, I hear about, you know, specifically around social media, like, like, you know, is that really the best thing for me to be doing? Isn't it just people on there talking about, you know, just, 
kind of not very important things. You know, I have a company to run, I have payroll to make, mm -hmm. you know, all that kind of stuff. So they think that that social media, th I shouldn't say that they think it's a waste of time, they're just not sure, right? There's a little, there's a lot of, uh, of, of unknowns about mm -hmm. it. So mm -hmm. those are pretty much the, the two things that we hear. So we do, we have a lot of uh, how-to content focused around, you know, how do you figure out what to do? Um, you know, how do you, how do you market your company in a way that is makes sense for you? You know, should you be on social media? And, um, and if so, you know, what a really efficient way. Mm -hmm. um, also, we've been hearing a lot lately about content, you know, which is kind of a subject near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's sort of another hot topic for a lot of, of small businesses in particular lately. Um, because you know, it, and, and I think of it as sort of a natural extension of social media. You know, how can you how can you start talking before you're really going to know what you should be talking about, right? So, um, getting your your content nailed. You know, maybe putting together a blog or, or some other content baby step, um, and then from there, sort of you know, growing by social media. So those are sort of the, the three things that I've been hearing a lot about lately. Now, uh, again, I, this is so helpful on, on a lot of levels because, again, within the photography industry, I think folks can get a little myopic because those are the common laments, mm -hmm. too. I, I hear that all the time with, with photographers that yeah. there's just too much to accomplish. And yet, it's interesting if when I've been in conversations with them and I, I survey how they actually spend their time, they whether they are uh, creating content for social media or, or consuming content in social media, they're definitely online and they're spending a lot of time mm -hmm. and resource in that space. Um, and right. I like what you said. It's not just enough to be on the space. It's also how do you create compelling, invitational content that will draw the right people in in the right way at the right time, and that could ultimately be a conversion. Um, how, yeah, do, how do you get yeah. people oriented right. to the to those ideas to from the from the get go? Because if they if they have bad habits, like they just log four hours a day on Facebook, and they know they're supposed to be in social media, but they don't really know what what they're doing there. How do you get them oriented and grounded on? kind of first things first what what do you prioritize for them right yeah i mean well first the first thing is always you know sort of you know why are you on there right what do you hope to accomplish i mean so you know you're you're spending four hours a day on on facebook right but do you have any sort of you know goals around that um or you're only sort of amassing friends i mean mm -hmm. you know it's like we always say like maybe an interesting metric it's sort of know well all right i have this broad footprint and i'm connecting connected to so many people um but if it's not sort of you know meeting your strategy you know then you know what are you doing there so really the, the first thing is always 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 like you know just think about you know what am i doing there what do i hope to accomplish um and for a small business owner i mean i think it doesn't have to be anything particularly um uh, you know, complicated. You know, it's really different when you get up mm -hmm. to like, if you're a Cisco, what are you doing in social media? Well, you know, that's a really complicated question that involves lots of different people. But I think for a small business owner, mm -hmm. you're ideally su suited to any sort of social activity because, you know, first of all, small businesses are more closely aligned with, you know, kind of their business, right? They're sort of very, um, yep. you yep. know, they're, they're, they're wired with it, right? Um, and so it's a little bit easier mm -hmm. to sort of, you know, be out there and, and converse in social media because you are your business and very often the small business owner is the one that has the passion for that um, so really to start with you know sort of what are you doing there what are you hoping to accomplish um, and then from there you know just just sort of start to do some things that feel right for you you know CC and I always get this question when we're speaking at events you know it's like well you know where do I start my content strategy what should I do first and we always say, you know, what do you have true passion for? You know, what aside from your business, you know, are you um, like in your audience, you know, that may be a photographer, right? Photography or video or something like that. Um, so, you know, right. sort of think about what's sustainable for you, because once you start, you know, producing content, you've got to be thinking about it long term. Um, so think about your goals and then think about, you know, sort of where are the best places for you to reach out to begin to, you know, kind of start to start to meet those goals, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, what what are some uh, some reasonable goals like that you've heard that that you're compelled by, especially for small business owners? Because I I think you're right. Like the idea of the first metric of followership or, or people paying attention, uh, giving mm -hmm. you permission to be in their lives, that makes sense to me. Um, but what what are some kind of standout uh, results that companies you've worked with have gotten through engaging social media, whether it be a blog or Twitter or Facebook? 
Right. Well, um, one of my favorite stories is is probably um, uh, the story of a virtual. Uh, sorry, a um, a venture capital company here in Boston, and you know, venture capital mm -hmm. is is probably not very much like your business, you know, but or the people who are on your list. But at the same time, you know, they're a small business, right? There's sort of a, a couple of partners. Um, it's a small small organization, um, and one of the goals that they had right. was let's let's build our email list, right? Let's get more involved with people. Let's let's sort of you know build our database. So that that was their goal. So they, they launched this blog, um, and the name of the company is Open View Labs. Uh, actually, Open View Venture Partners is the name of the company, but the name of their blog is Open View Labs. And they just started blogging and producing all kinds of content on a regular basis. You know, they sort of almost run it like it's a, um, um, like it's a trade publication versus a blog. I'm going to shut off my phone. Um, they're producing all kinds of. Oh, sorry, sorry about that. Um, they're producing all kinds of content that that to to reach the people that they want to reach, which are expansion expansion stage technology companies. Um, but again, you know, a, a niche company wanting to reach very niche people, right? This isn't a vast pool of people out there that they want to reach. Um, and so this is the way that they did that, right? So they just started they started publishing their way into these people's uh, into sort of the, their consciousnesses, and um, and their one of their goals was was um, was email, you know, just to sort of get more involved, to be able to have permission to email these people and to sort of start the beginning of a relationship with them, you know. So that's a reasonable goal. I like how you described uh, a moment ago that this is a long-term commitment. That it's not something you can kind of pop in and pop out of that if you want right. to develop rapport with people over the long haul, uh, it does require a, a significant commitment. And I also like that you're describing that in terms of content because whether it be uh, written or video or broadcasting or, or whatever you want to come mm -hmm. up with, uh, finding something right. that you actually enjoy doing makes a lot of sense. But I've also seen a lot of folks leverage social media in kind of, um, I don't know how to describe it, al almost just like stunts. like a one-time hit to get a spike in traffic or a, an event or maybe something pretty controversial. What do you think of those kinds right, of efforts, yeah. just pragmatically, to jumpstart uh, people paying attention to what you're doing? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a, that's a great thing to do. I mean, if you can, if you can um, create content that there, or, you know, to do any sort of like marketing stunt, like you say, I mean, I think that's a great thing, right? So if, I guess if you're talking about like creating a viral video or something like that, um, I mean, that's yeah, awesome, sure. but to me, that's sort of more of a happy accident than anything else. You know, it's like you can't, you can't really plan for viral, right? You can't produce viral. Um, but what you can do is, is produce stuff that's enjoyable, stuff that will, you know, sort of, in, you know, drag your audience in, you know, sort of attract them to you. So mm -hmm. people always ask us, like, you know, so how do I produce a viral video or how do I produce something that's really going to, you know, make a big splash, get a big hit? And it's like the answer is, you know, you can't, right? You can't do viral. Um, you know, again, that's something that's a, it's a happy accident. If it happens to you, like, that's great, you know. Um, but at the same time, you know, I think that, that instead of going for the big hit, you know, I think just a, a consistent production of even, you know, sort of less uh, impressive things is, is probably more, more lasting and more long term. Um, something you said earlier, too, I thought was interesting, like when we were talking about content and you said, you know, videos and, and um, like podcasts or audio or anything like that. I mean, all of that is content, right? This right here mm -hmm. is content. And Absolutely. sometimes I think people fall into this idea that, you know, well, content is text, right? It's something that I can read. It's, you know, a book or a blog. Um, but it's not. I mean, it, it can be anything. It's anything that you create or share that tells your story, right? So mm -hmm. it could be um, it could be a blog, but it could also be you know videos. It could also be um, photographs. It could be a webinar. I mean, it could be anything, you know. So mm -hmm. really, just uh, it could be a puppet show. You know, actually, there's a company recently <laughs> that I heard about that's producing a puppet show, and it's like it's wacky, right? But you know, wow. it's content. And so really just to think about content as, as again, things that, that tell or, or, um, or that, that, that you can create or, or share that tell your story. You know, that's the really important thing. Think about the story. You know, don't think about, you know, kind of, uh, you know, that, that don't get caught too much up in like a blog or a book or, you know, whatever. Right. Well, it's interesting. One of the f uh, more legendary uh, guys in our field in, in the photo vertical is uh, this guy named Scott Bourne. He's a friend of mine. And mm -hmm. He is north of 100,000 followers and uh, he does do some really interesting uh, giveaways and where people draw draws a lot of attention to him. 
Um, but he also, he, when in mm -hmm. talking with him personally, he, he says, you know, really what he thinks gets him consistent increased traffic over long periods of time is that he just does a single tip uh, to his particular folks that he's talking to every single day for, uh, you know, several, right. like thousands of days in a row. And uh, when he's done yeah. that, that's what's kind of, yeah. and he got in early and he kept doing it and he kept doing it and he kept doing it. And what's really interesting to me is the folks that mimic his efforts, like what he does is he gives away, he'll do like a, uh, hey, retweet this and you have a chance to win a camera or something like that. And a lot of cynical folks mm -hmm. will say, oh, he's just giving away, he's buying followers by giving away cameras. And, but what's interesting is folks who've tried to replicate his exact technique don't get the same response that he does. And I'm wondering, how, how do you hmm. interpret those kinds of dynamics where it's not just about the technique that people are employing, but again, in his words, he thinks it's more about the consistency. Which, which do you think is, it, is more, more critical? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm guessing it's probably a lot of him too, right? I mean, I'm guessing that he right. sort of has a certain you know personality, and voice. you know he's sort right. of known in the right. industry. Um, yeah, he has a voice, right? I mean, I think that's that's probably part of it right there. Um, you know, I, I'm guessing that he's probably accessible. I mean, you don't get to 100,000 followers on Twitter just by giving away stuff. You know, I mean, you, you get there, or I should say, <laughs> you may get there, but you're not going to keep them. And I think probably he does a really good job of kind of nurturing that community and sort of, you know, being a, being a voice, being a leader, being somebody that, that people want to be around, right? He's probably very mm -hmm. human. You know, I'm guessing that that's not all he does. He probably... Um, engages in actual conversations with people. Um, so again, I mean, I think that's a real strength of, of social that a lot of small businesses can more easily, you know, sort of wrap their heads around that, that they're more suited to really than, than a lot of larger companies. Well, l let's talk about that idea of being human for a second. Uh, I love that before the show started, sure. uh, we jump on and, and we can, uh, we're talking about, you know, I have four kids home for summer, you have two kids home for summer. Uh, we have uh, dogs barking in the background and, you know, real life showing up. And it's, it's interesting uh, that the feedback, you know, I think I'll say something really profound or offer some great essay or something. You know, I get crickets. Mm -hmm. Nobody says a thing. But then I'll talk about how, you know, I feel about my six-year-old who's growing up or something. And all of a sudden, people they yeah. respond uh, in, in a very kind of uh, human, deep, rich way. And... And it's interesting when I look at uh, a number of my colleagues who, who are engaging social media, creating content, some of them for the first time, um, they have the sense of they, they need to make it formal or something that mimics corporate life or uh, something like right, that. And right. I don't, I don't quite know the language, but I'm sure that's not uncommon. And, and uh, it seems like making it personal is more even, even more critical than ever because it can break through the veneer of the screen. Um, but I don't know. That's what I make. Yeah. Up. What's your interpretation? Yeah, no, I mean, I absolutely agree with you. But, you know, I mean, I, maybe I have poor boundaries anyway, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, I'm just I'm just kidding. Um, no, I, I do think that uh, that, you know, that this is a that a strength of of social is really just to be very human. Right. That's why I love content so much, because I think that it really does offer an opportunity more than anything else, really, to um sort of you know to do business with people i mean people do business with people right even in a even in a um a business to business situation you know they're still looking to connect with other human beings um and actually one of our content rules that we talk about in the book is um is to be human you know to sort of let a little bit of your humanity show you know sort of to give a sense of the people behind you know your business or you know part of your company you know sort of show them as real people and not just sort of you know bots who are uh, you know on an assembly line somewhere because that's not who any of us are um, so I like mm -hmm. that um, I think there's a lot of companies who do have a hard time with that you know um, and maybe it maybe part of that is for the reasons that you say because they don't feel that they sound as professional right or they sound like um, you know, they're afraid, right? right? They're terrified that they're going to come off as like less professional or less buttoned up or whatever. Um, but I think, you know, the companies that are most successful sort of let go of that and they say, you know, let's just mm. try it. You know, let's just see how it goes. Um, again, much easier for a small company, for a small business than it is for a big company. Um, but mm -hmm. I, you know, I see big companies doing it too. There's, you know, Cisco's doing some really interesting stuff with, you know, sort of being human, you know, being doing uh, some unexpected mm. things using humor you know so um i think it's possible mm. but i really i really do agree with you um 100 i mean 
like I said, one of our, our rules was to speak human in the book, and that just means to communicate, you know, in very human terms and on, on sort of a real level with other people. And our publisher said to us, you know, do you, do you really need that? Because, you know, isn't everybody who buys right. the book going to be human, you know? Isn't everybody who reads the book going to be human? And um, I mean, I've been an editor in this marketing and business space for a long time. And I mean, I will tell you, we need that rule. We need that, you know, speak human rule yeah. because people don't for the same reasons that you say, you know? So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm well, all for I'm it. And I, and I think that um, people, people are relaxing a little bit. And I think, I think social is helping with that. Yeah. Well, and related to that, I mean, I'm reminded of, um, I, I'm not only an acquaintance at best of, with Scott Stratton, but I think of all the success he's seen mm -hmm. with his unmarketing efforts. And um, it seems right. like th that kind of uh, candid, authentic, uh, even if it's even if it's um, a persona he's created, it, 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 I don't know that, whether it is or it isn't, but it's just striking how compelling people are ravenous actually after no I want authentic I want real I want human but also right right all within these right. gutter lines that that don't don't I don't know mess with the brand and um, yeah I, I don't well, know that's just, yeah it's, that's it's kind of an amorphous tension. notion though isn't it it's like it yeah is. right no it is and I and I was just gonna say that I think there is that sort of you know there, there's kind of this feeling well yeah we want you to be authentic well what does that really mean you know I mean I don't understand what that means it's like I think that that's kind of one of those amorphous sort of squishy words you know so um, mm -hmm. so that's why you know we, we try to be very specific about what does that mean you know it means just show a little bit about your personality share a little bit about your personal life you know talk about the fact that you had a dog barking in the background a minute ago I mean that made you more human to me automatically right and and what did you say at the top of this you know I like you more all the time that makes a difference right because I've got a kid who's like behind that white door right there. I just saw his fingers like, you know, <laughs> like reaching around even though they're under like, you know, the penalty of uh, of never getting another loving embrace from me unless they go away from that door right now. <laughs> but but um, it's, <laughs> it's, you know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, a, you know, being okay with showing who you are, you know, and for Scott Stratton, I mean, that is absolutely who he is and um, I saw him last week in, in Baltimore when we both spoke at the same event and I don't think that would work for him if that was just a persona you know if that wasn't really who he is because it right. is who he is you know it's just it's right. it's it's sort of baked into his um, his whole vibe his whole person and and it's it just allows him he just he's mm -hmm. basically just tapping into who he is you know that's what authentic means mm -hmm. Well, okay, so I love that because uh, you know I had a, a friend once say like if you're trying to be authentic, you've already failed. Uh, you either are, <laughs> yeah. and that there's a sense in which that tapping into yeah. DNA uh, is critical. And I think uh, honestly, it seems like so much of this, like I, I'm reminded of um, uh, Dan Pink's whole new mind and his his saying like you know this is the era for the creative and to never before have we been able able to. Um, where the mandate really is the people who can kind of rule the world mm -hmm. are the folks who who really do get in touch with that dna and put it on display authentically and and are are themselves um in a very committed way so they're not just kind of thinking about or on the right. fence or afraid or if they are afraid they come out and say i'm afraid but i'm doing it anyways uh, but it is that kind right. of taking action that seems to turn the corner for a lot of people um and i guess i guess in that um, yeah what i'm reminded of is isn't so much content that that to me seems more like context like if i can contextualize what i'm creating uh for marketing for, for mm -hmm. promoting for letting people know what i care about um, that really the context is me uh if if, a, if it's danesanders.com it's coming out of that context so that therefore the stuff that i produce can only come from me but i don't know sometimes when i try to make that distinction of content and context i get kind of blank stares and people are like i don't even know what you're talking about uh, is there a better way to talk about it where where people are trying to identify is because honest okay i'll be candid the conversations i get mm -hmm. in with with people they'll say look that guy over there that woman over there they're successful and they're doing x y and z mm -hmm. so i'm going to go ahead and do x y and z and i have this internal reaction mm -hmm. to that and say well why are you doing x y and z because x y and z is true for them or it fits or it clicks and i don't want to be that kind right. of to kumbaya uh true like a, those kind of squishy words like you say but i do think that there's something connected to the content that comes from me ought to come from me 
and the content that comes from mm -hmm. from Anne or anyone else needs to be somehow in line or in, in alignment. Um, but what what are some better ways to talk about that as you've had a chance to be in these conversations? Yeah, right, right. I mean, it's it's yeah, I, I, that's absolutely true. I mean, it's like I I can't be um, Dane Sanders, right? I can't be Scott Stratton because I'm I'm not, you know. And so I th I think. Um, I think that the tension comes in where you try to be something that you're not, you know, where you try to think, you know, you try to sort of assume this persona, this personality. Um, but that's mm -hmm. that's not really what you want to do. You can think about, you know, personas in, ter in terms of, you know, who you're marketing to, but in terms of how you market, you know, how you're speaking and so on, I think mm -hmm. you really need to stay true to yourself. Um, I mean, I, I guess that would be my take on it. I mean, I I, th I do think that it's it's about content, but it's content in the right context. I guess is is probably more the way that I would yeah. frame it. You know, it's like there are things that I do in um, on Twitter where I am at marketing profs. You know, that I that I feel like I'm sort of representing a brand there. So I sort of have a, I don't That's know right. like a protocol to uphold. You know, I mean, it's still me. But at the same time, you know, I'm not, um, you know, I don't swear, for example, you know, <laughs> you know, um, or there, there are certain, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm personal, but really I'm more personable, you know, and I guess that's where I sort of make the distinction where on Facebook, for example, if you're my friend yeah. on Facebook, then, you know, I'm very personal there. I'm also personable, but I'm sort of more, um, it's more on the personal front where, you know, Twitter is more on the personal bull front. So I guess, you know, you can you can have the content and you can sort of, you know, put it across various streams and, you know, put it on various platforms and still, you know, be true to yourself. But at the same same time, be very aware of sort of what the context for all of those sort of platforms and all of those, you know, places are, because I think that to me mm -hmm. is, is sort of how I think about it. I'm not sure if that's if you'd agree with that or, or not. Yeah, no, that, that really resonates. I mean, I think. Uh, I, I just I just like I think when I first saw your guys's book content rules I was I was drawn to it but also yeah. nervous about it because it just seemed like us it was just content that anyone can go do it it, it it misses kind of the magic and I like how you put that the content in in the right context is what I think makes one person become right. mimicking Scott not not succeed right uh, right and i mean i think but, you uh, just you know the one thing i, I we are good so i was just going to say that you know, one of the things that, that you you just hit on is something that i really believe in and and that was where you said how you were sort of nervous when you got when you sort of saw content rules right um because to me this is this is sort of why we wrote the book is it's not just about any kind of content right it's not just putting up a blog and like you know posting some old, same old, same old, like press releasey kind of thing to your blog and then mm -hmm. putting it out there and, you know, mm -hmm. and getting all that search juice and look at all the keywords we're using. It's not about that, right? It's about really creating stuff that's really going to represent your brand, who you are, um, and, and, and how content And B, that sounds kind of like squishy and, and, you know, again, sort of like, our, you know, we believe in a, in a very meaningful way, um, you know, really do produce the best stuff and really do grow their business. So that's my two cents pitch for is it, is creating content, content that matters. Is, is it content? Well, I, it's critical. It's funny though. I'm sitting here thinking of the folks who are at home watching and they're like, okay, that's great. I don't, they predetermined that they don't create content or they're, <laughs> they're uh, too introverted or they're too, you know, whatever their, their, their thing is. And they're thinking, I guess I need to go hire a writer or at least a copy editor or, or something. Um, mm -hmm. My input to them is always like, well, l let's, let's find out how badly you, you can fail at this first. Like go do something, put right. it out there right. and then, and see right. how bad it is. Cause it might not be as bad as you think. Uh, and actually it might be more about fear and not really about ability, but, uh, how, how do you respond to those folks who who have that kind of well i guess i'm not i'm not up for it right well i mean i think the point is to play to your strengths right so it's not just about um mm -hmm. you know it's not being something you're not just kind of what we're talking about like if you're not a writer then don't write mm -hmm. i mean i am a writer and that's kind of my, my the way that i think about things is very text oriented but like i said you know, and yeah. a, a little while ago, it's like it's not just about text, right? So I think about um, Charlie King, who owns a, um, a he's the pro actually at a, at a golf course um, called Reynolds Reynolds Golf 
um, Reynolds Golf Academy. He's the he's the pro of this golf school, oh. and um, and basically, you know, he's he's not much of a writer either. But what he is great on is he's very personal and very personable, I should say, um, in video. And so he puts together these videos about you know um, like how to how to like properly swing a club and and how to hold your head and and you know just sort of how to how to do things very how to instructionally focused. But at the same time, they're fun, right? And Charlie is a personality that you can relate to. Um, so he's not writing, right? He's not putting up a blog and like forcing himself to like sit down and churn out 300, you know, words at a time. But he's playing to his strengths. He's doing what he's comfortable with, and it's it's really worked for him. Hmm. Uh, any uh, the one thing we didn't address in this conversation is time and. Uh, again, mm. I want to honor your time. By the way, I love I love the sound of your dogs in the background. It is warm to my. I heart. don't can you I, hear I that. Have an English bulldog <laughs> and like it's it's actually wonderful. So if you have any anxiety about it, please just block it out of your mind. It's adding huge value. My numbers are going through the roof right now because of your dogs. So thank you. Um, <laughs> but what I was going to ask was <laughs> regarding time. Um, how when people say you know 20, 24 hours in a day, uh, I don't have enough. I need another seven. You know the common mm. lament. Um, in my mind, that has to be, it's more about, you know, people have legitimate commitments. If you have eight kids or you have no kids, it's a different right. kind of life. Uh, so, so I get that. But at the same time, there's only so many hours that anybody is given. Um, how much should people be allocating to content creation and, and distributing it online? Yeah, is that's that, a tough that question. We actually get question? that a lot. No, no, it, it's it's fine. We we actually do get that a lot. You know, how much time should I be doing this? And and the reality is, you know, you can mm -hmm. you can create you can, you can sort of uh, you know do it as as much or as little. I think the important thing is you hit upon a little while ago is consistency, right? You only have to do one thing a week if you know if that's what what you're capable of doing. If that's what's sustainable for you, then that's great. Um, you know, if you can only put yeah. up one photo a day on a on a um, a photo sharing site, then that's what you're doing. But I think you've got to do something, and that's the really important thing. Um, because you know, yeah. to me, it's like you've if you are doing business online, you know, you sort of have have to be thinking in this way. You can't just have a brochure where website anymore. It's just not going to do what it could be doing for you. It's, it's you're sort of selling yourself short. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you've got to be thinking about something and and um, and it you know, it doesn't have to be a, a huge bloated thing, it, but it has to be something. Start small, start, um, you know, play to your strengths. Like I said, you know, what can you sustain? What can you do long term? That's the important thing. And um, and I, I, you know, mm. give it a, give it a shot, you know, and, and make sure that you're in it for the long haul. You know, it's not going to be a, a three month one and done thing. You know, give it six months. Look at where you are, you know, give it nine months, give it a year and then see, you know, and I, I mean, I guarantee you, if you do it right, you will see results, and that's what it's all about. Hmm. Well, Anne, I, I can't thank you enough again for being on the show. And and by the way, I, I know when we initiated, first off, you were in Southern California and missed you by like a day or two. Um, as a, yes, as right. It's so ridiculously token because I'm I'm the benefactor. But the next time you're out here, please, please, can we hang out? I would love to. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, or I'd love that. Yeah. Or have you over? And also, I'd I'd love to. Um, uh, to have you back again sometime on the show because honestly the, it feels like we're just opening up um, and what, I, what I'm hoping to have happen is have the viewers begin to tune in to marketingprofs.com and hopefully go right. out and pick up content rules um, so that we can even have an even more developed conversation around the ideas because I think if folks I was really impressed when I read content rules um, I got it at South by and, and and went through it carefully and I was I was just it was it was a very mm -hmm. readable accessible um, uh, piece that you guys put together that I think puts tangible handles on, okay, if I'm going to do this thing, right. how am I going to do it? Like, how am I going to move forward? And right. uh, I think you did a, us a huge service. So just know I'm coming your way to get you back on here. Awesome. No, that's great. I mean, that's, that's, I'm, I'm really gratified to hear that because, you know, I, I mean, I didn't, I, I wrote the book, not for marketers, but for businesses and I wanted them to enjoy it. I wanted them to hmm. pick it up and say, you know, this book rocks and I can just sort of read it and it's fun and it's engaging. And that's what it's all about. It's not like, you know, I didn't want it to be medicine. You know, I didn't want people to feel like, Oh God, I got to read that book. So thank you. I really appreciate uh -huh. that. Yeah, my pleasure. Well, thanks again for being on. And uh, for those of you who are tuning in, if this is valuable at all, uh, be sure to be following at Marketing Profs and um, uh, uh, on the replay as well. Be sure to do that and, and hit up their site. I think you're going to be amazed at the, the incredible amount of content. I just I can't believe the amount that you guys produce. Um, so I know. I it's crazy. So check it out. So th <laughs> thanks again, Anne. We'll talk to you later.